The first written report of the superb wren was reported by a man called Ellis, who was the assistant surgeon on Captain Cook's voyages in the Endeavour. They had just stopped at Adventure Bay in Tasmania, and he reports as follows. There are also three or four small birds, one of which is of the thrush kind, and another one small with a pretty long tail, has part of the head and neck of the most beautiful azure colour, from whence we named it Motocilla cyanea. This account was published in 1784. Today we don't group it with the thrushes, instead it is a fairy wren, not like the wrens of the Americas, and the genera for it now is called Malarus, and the name is still Zionius, and being the most common fairy wren in Australia, it is often referred to as the blue wren. John Gould, the true father of ornithology in Australia, wrote a very nice account of the blue wrens. This came as follows. The Malurus cyaneus gives preference to those parts of the country which are thinly covered with low scrubby brushwood, and especially to localities of this description, which are situated near the borders of rivers and ravines. During the months of winter, it's associated in small troops of from six to eight in number, probably the brood of a single pair, which continually traverse the district in which they were bred. At this period of the year, the adult males throw off their fine livery, and the plumage of the sexes then becomes so nearly alike that a minute examination is requisite to distinguish them. The old males have the black bills at all seasons, whereas the young males during the first year and the females have this organ always brown. The tail feathers, also which with the primaries, are only molted once a year and are of a deeper blue in the old male. As spring advances, the small troops separate into pairs and the males undergo a total transformation, not only in their colour, but in the texture of their plumage. Indeed, a more astonishing change can scarcely be imagined. This change is not confined to the plumage alone, but extends also to the habitats of the bird, for it now displays great vivacity, proudly showing off its gorgeous attire to the utmost advantage, and pours out its animated song unceasingly. By the end of this video we should have shown you these changes that happen with molt and maturity. But for now, what we need to do is look at this female bird and say, is there any other bird that looks like it? And indeed, there is. The variegated fairy wren female is very similar, but when you look at them closely, you can see the eye ring of the variegated fairy wren is a deep chestnut colour. The superb eye ring is virtually the same colour as the bill, but the variegated eye ring is much darker than the bill. In juveniles, the darker laws helps us to separate the variegated from the superb fairy wren. One other point of separation is that the female variegated has a faint blue tail. The female splendid fairy wren is also similar, but again, look at the laws. And in the splendid, the laws are a more pale orange than the bill. Back to our superb fairy wrens. Here you can see the female taking a bath with some finches. At this time we are in the northern tablelands of New South Wales. The habitat is open woodland with good understory and grass areas. The finches like the grass area and the fairy wrens like the understory. The male superb fairy wren can be easily distinguished from most other males. The greater majority have red on the wings except the splendid which is really like a blue boy all over. So the difficulty really in identifying wrens is in the females but the good thing is that if you just sit there a little bit longer usually the male will pop out and give you a clue as to what you are looking at. The superb fairy wren 
is one of the six species of Malurus found in Australia. DNA hybridisation shows that the closest relatives in the fairy wren group are the splendid fairy wren and the purple crowned fairy wren. The polygamous nature of Malurus fairy wrens was first described in the Hunter Valley by a Mr P Austin. He gave the information to John Matthews who wrote a comprehensive 10 volume series about the birds of Australia. This polygamous nature has now been well documented with DNA studies. Confirmed polygamy occurs in all the fairy wrens that have been studied. As far as variations in superb fairy wrens, there are indeed six subspecies recognised. However, to show these subspecies uh, visually with photography is extremely difficult as there is only a slight variation in size and colour. These subspecies are defined more geographically than anything else and there are separate subspecies on Tasmania, the Flinders Islands, Kangaroo Islands and the South Australian bird varies a little bit from the Victorian and New South Wales birds. These birds are insectivorous like all fairy wrens. They spend most of their time hunting for insects on the ground but they will also glean from shrubs and occasionally under the higher canopy but this is most unusual. Now we want to look at the variations in the male with age and molting. Looking at this bird you can immediately see that there's no orange in the laws and the absence of a coloured eye ring. So it's unlikely to be a female and it has a blue tail and the bill is black. This is a non-breeding male or a male in eclipse mode. Look, there's a female in the field of view now. Orange iring, orange laws. A female superb fairy wren. So the two together confirms that this is indeed a male in the eclipse mode. Now, here is one coming out of the eclipse mode with a few spots appearing. What happens as they come in towards springtime? It's when they breed and they will go from eclipse mode into the adult coloration of the beautiful, superb fairy wren. With this last shot we will show you a bird coming out into the full blown male. He starts to sing. We know that spring is here. Soon they will be breeding. <laughs>